All right, welcome. So today we're gonna do a really cool video here inside of Photoshop with this wonderful face that we have on the screen here. We're gonna do a combination of the multiple exposure effect that we see in Photoshop all the time and a cinemagraph. So what in the world does that mean? That means we're gonna take this image, make it a little bit more contrasty to make the blending a little bit easier and it's gonna be still. And then we're gonna combine it with a video inside of Photoshop. Yes, a video, and yes, if you didn't know, an edit video on the video timeline inside of Adobe Photoshop. And we're gonna make that aspect of the image moved and have this really cool effect where basically right in here, the video part is gonna be and it's gonna move and the rest is just gonna be the image of me and that's gonna be completely still. All right, so how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we need to do is make some adjustments, but I've already made those adjustments, just darkening down the areas. To make blending moves, to make blending modes work really cool, we're gonna darken some areas really strongly, and that's just gonna make the blending really easy. If we have these kind of gray areas, it's not gonna blend so easy, so we want really strong contrast. But then I wanna keep this area of light here. So I've made some just basic minor adjustments. We're gonna go ahead and hit open. We're gonna do the most or the majority of this inside of Photoshop. All right, cool. So we've got this picture of me here and what do we need to do is, first thing is just select me out. That's gonna be the easiest thing to do here. So go up here to this new wonderful selection tool and say, hey sucker, select me. Cool, just like that, it has selected me. Now, once it's selected me, we're gonna always come up here and go to Selected Mask to make a better selection. So we're gonna grab that Refined Edge tool, make sure Mr. Smart Radius is turned on, everything else should be at zero. And then we are just gonna paint over those stray hairs so it can kind of pick stuff up. Hey, making your brush the right size is important in this. You wanna make sure that it's not too big or not too small. And we're just gonna apply this to the areas where those stray hairs are just on the outer edge of my hair. And hopefully it will do a better job of picking that stuff up. We're just gonna assume that it did a good job, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna output this as a new layer with a layer mask, which is important. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I'm gonna drag this mask down because I don't think I'm gonna use that background layer, but I might need the mask again. So we're just gonna hold the Alt Option key and drag that down and it's being cranky because it's the background layer. So you double click on it, hit okay. And then you drag that layer down and then it becomes happy. We're gonna turn that off because we don't want that layer on. Now we wanna refine this mask a little bit so we don't get any weird edges. So what I'm gonna do is hold Alt Option and I'm gonna click on the mask. See those little weird gray areas? Those are bad, we don't want those. Those are gonna show up as like translucent or white areas. To do that, you can come down here to your dodge and burn tool. So the first thing that we have here is to burn and we want to burn the shadows. So burn the shadows mean darken them. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger here. We've got the exposure pretty high. We don't know, necessarily need 80%. But what this is gonna do, it's gonna darken the dark areas, but it's not going to affect the white areas at all. So I can come in here and just kind of go over this and really make those black areas totally black and the white areas totally white. And we'll just go over the edge just in case it's a little bit off. And then we're gonna flip it and do the opposite. So then we're gonna come over here and go to Dodge. And we want highlights. Then we just wanna go in here and we don't want any areas to be like semi-transparent. So anything that I just wanna make sure it's kind of solid on, I'll paint over it. And this looks pretty good. And always come back and further refine this later. But all right, we got a good mask. A good mask is always a great starting point inside Photoshop. So hold that Alt Option key again. Bam, we're back to the next thing. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crop this old picture down so we can see what we want to do with it. So I'm gonna come in here, grab the crop tool. Now I'm gonna do this as a 16 by 9 on this image. Um, there's a couple of different reasons. I could keep this as an original three by two, and we're just gonna keep it at 16 by nine. It doesn't really matter. What I'm gonna do is just kind of move this down so we get a better crop. 
Now I've got myself over here because I might use this for a logo or some advertising or something like that. Now I can come in here and crop this down on my head. So if I want to go all the way on my head, I can. In this case, I'm just going to come right about just above it. I'm going to hit return and bam, we're going to crop it just like that. So now we have our crop applied to the image. So the next thing we need to do is remember I said it needs to be darker. So we're going to come up here to the uh, adjustment curve and make an adjustment curve. Now it's going to happen everywhere. Don't worry about it. I'm just looking in this dark area and this is going to be a pretty nasty curve. So don't be surprised if you're like, oh my God, what in the world are you doing? It looks horrible. Yeah, we want it to look horrible because we want it to be really dark in those areas. All right, cool. So I've got this really strong curve. But remember, we don't want it in this area of the face. We want that to be light because otherwise the blending modes won't work well. What do we need to do? We need to come out here in the gray space of this curve. And I'm going to double left click. And it's going to bring up the layer style box. And we want Mr. Blend If. So if we don't want it to apply to the highlights, we slide the highlights until it removes from that area. And it's a harsh transition right now. We don't want harsh transitions here in our life. So you hold the Alt Option key and you can split those and make it a soft transition. Wonderful. Now I've got a soft transition. I can go this way or I can go this way. Basically, I just want to spread these guys. The further out I spread them, the softer the transition between the two layers. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK because that looks good. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I don't actually want that strong contrast right here on my eye. Maybe on the glasses, not on my eye. So we're just going to come in here and paint that out. So I will grab my brush. And if you want to remove something, you go into a mask with the color black at 100%. Paint black into that area. Make your brush smaller if you got a smaller area. I want to take it out of here. I'm going to go inside my glasses. Get that out. I kind of want my glasses to be contrasty. So if I messed it up a little bit, it's not the end of the world. But basically, I want to paint it out of that area. And if I want to look at my mask to make sure I got it perfect, look, I can come in here and get that little spot that I missed. Hold Alt Option, click on the mask again. Bam, it's gone. So now we've got that. We've got my eye so you can see it. We've got a smooth transition. So what do we need next? That cool video. So let's go ahead and open it. So command O, where are you video? Right here. We're going to use this one to start off with. So this is just something I downloaded. We're going to go ahead and say open. And it's going to give us some crazy information. And then, wow, it opens up a video, a video inside Photoshop. And oh my God, look, there's a timeline in here. But we don't want it on this layer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab old Mr. Video. We want the video group. And we're going to grab our move tool and we're going to move it over here. Oops, before we do that, we got to do something because yes, sometimes I even make mistakes, but I caught it. Now you notice we do have the video timeline up. If it's not there, we'll just go ahead and close it for now, just so it's easier to see. We need to do a couple things. First of all, this is in grayscale. And we want to make this mode color because otherwise the video is going to show up as a black and white video and it's going to look really stupid. We want it in color. And then we're going to go image mode 8 bit because we don't need 16 bits. And then we're going to size this. And that video is sized at 1920 by 1080. So we'll go ahead and just make that this the exact same size. Command plus a couple times, make it bigger. That looks like the size we're going to get. Now we can move that video. So we got that move tool. We're just going to grab this video, move it into here, and then we'll line that little guy up. And right there, we've got that video. All right. Now we don't want this to overlay the whole image because now we can't see me. So what are we going to do? We can do a couple different things. We could come up here and just change the blend mode to darken. And what that's going to do, it's going to put that video in the background everywhere. And if you want it everywhere, that's cool. But I'm going to do something a little bit different because I want to show a tutorial and show you how multiple ways to do the same thing. So if you want it to just apply to one area, you're going to go ahead and grab that mask again, hold the Alt Option key, drag it up to that group. Now it's just applying this here. 
It looks like something moved a little bit or we're missing this area. Why is that not black? Something moves, something crazy, but we can fix that, right? If something's showing and we want to hide it, we'll just paint black into it. It's not a big deal. So let's grab our brush, go to this mask, and paint black right there and hide that little guy. Not sure what happened. Don't care. That looks good. We fixed the issue. Now, if you want to move your video around inside of the image, you need to unlink it. So you need to click this button here. If you didn't, the mask and the video will both move at the same time. So now we can click on that video and click, grab our move tool. And we can align that. I'm just going to leave it where it is. But believe me, you can align it or move it or adjust it around. So in this case, we're just going to link that back up because we want to keep it where it is. All right, so we've got our video and we've got it applying to a specific area, but it's applying it everywhere. So we're going to go back up to those blending modes. Now, this is kind of dependent on your image and what you want to do. I'm probably going to be using darken in this case because I want it on the light area of me. I could do multiply. I could do color burn. I can just go and hover over all these different modes. Actually, darker color looks pretty good too. So darker color, darken, darker color. I like darker color. Lighten would put that on the opposite, which is the black areas. In this case, I don't want that. And we can just hover over and we can do overlay, soft light, some blending. These are going to do some different things. We can go down here to the difference and do some crazy stuff. We could do luminosity, just the color. In this case, I'm actually going to use darker color. I don't know why, but I've never used darker color in my life. So this is a perfect time to start using darker color because it worked good on this image. All right, cool. So now we've got this, but we want to make this into a cinema graph. So we're going to go up here to window. Click good old Mr. Timeline that we've never, ever clicked on it. And then right here, it says create timeline because, yes, we want you to do it, Photoshop. So we don't have to do anything because we're lazy. All right, cool. So now we've got this timeline, but oh my gosh, look how long the video is. Now we could have done this in the beginning, but we didn't think about that. So let me go ahead and hit play so you can start to see what's gonna happen. Ooh, it's moving. All right, cool. But we want it to move a little bit more than that or do something a little bit different. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna shorten it or we're gonna change the timeline. So I can come in here to the timeline and find the area that I like the best. So let's say I like this area right here. So now I'm gonna drag this over this way and remove that part of the timeline. And then we're gonna come over here. And I'm looking right up on the top right. It's giving me the duration. See, I've got that at five seconds. Bam, that's what I want is five seconds. Now I could speed this up or slow it down. It's up to me, I can click here. And if you wanted to speed this up and use more of the video, you can easily speed this up or slow it down. We're just gonna leave it at the speed it is now, but it's really easy to do that. So now when I come here, it's gonna be on this whole image. So I'm just gonna click on it and you can see, whoa, it's moving just like that. All right, cool. Now, if I wanted it to move faster, I would just increase that speed and then it would move quicker and just progress to that video a whole lot faster. But for the tutorial, we're gonna keep it simple and just let it move slowly just like that. So cool, we have that set. Now we're gonna make this do a cinema graph and the cinema graph loops as a GIF. So now we have to do the complicated part, which is actually really kind of easy. So I've expanded the timeline so it's easier to see. And what we need to do here is click on this layer up here and we're gonna hit Command J and duplicate that layer because we want two of these layers. So we're gonna select this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little mover guy here and we're gonna put this right in the center. Look, it doesn't need to be perfect, just close to in the center. You're gonna click this little cut icon, it's gonna snap that guy in half, snap them right in half. All right, so now we need to switch these two. We need this one over here and this one over here. So what we're gonna do is kinda of click on a different layer. I need to get that off. All right, so we can just select one and we're gonna pick him up, put him over here. And they basically flipped and we'll just move that so that they fit perfect. And these moved a little bit. I'm not great with timelines, so I'm not really sure why they moved. It looks like we adjusted the time a little bit. No big deal. We'll just make it a few seconds longer. Now we have the layers on the right side, which is important. Now we're going to take this and put the little timeline in between this clip. So we just want it on that clip. We're going to select that clip 
and then click it. All right. And then we're going to come over here between this one, select that clip. And then we're going to take these two on the inside out. We don't want those. And we're going to move this one back over here. And then you're going to come over here. We are going to make fade. So we're going to come up here, click on this, grab fade, and you're going to put it on the inside. We want to fade the insides of these. So we kind of want to fade it in and out, in and out. And cool. That's basically it. We've got that set up exactly how we want. So we can come over here to the timeline. I can hit space bar and you can see, ooh, it's moving. All right, cool. So that's moving. So the next thing we need to do is obviously I would save this so I could come in here. I've already saved it. So I'm just going to hit save. We're going to save that so we don't lose it if it crashes in the next step because we're going to use something that's kind of slow. So you're going to come up here to file and go to export save for legacy web. Now, don't be worried. This takes quite a bit for it to come up. You get that little thing and it looks like your computer has crashed. It just takes a while for it to come up. So be patient. All right, cool. So we've got this window up and this is the old version of how to export. And the first thing we want to do is you look, it's our 15.92 megabytes, which is too large. We don't actually need this 1900 by 20 because we're not going to use it that big. So let's say I'm going to put this in my web page at 1000 pixels. We can hit 1000 tab and reset that. And then you can see it's working itself again, right? It's going through the process. It's going to resize it. Once it's done resizing the image, you'll see it get smaller and fit in the window. Remember, this is going to be a GIF because we're doing a cinema graph. I'm going to have my color as perceptual. Diffusion is on. And we're going to actually, when this is done, and it is, we're going to click transparency off because I don't actually need the transparency in this. We want our colors at 256. We're going to convert this to sRGB. And everything else is set. You can see now it's only 6.7 megabytes, which is much smaller than 15. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. All right, and we are going to save this as me, C-I-N, for our cinema graph. And we're just going to overwrite this. Um, something happened on the last video on the sound cut out. So I've already saved it once. So we're just going to overwrite it this time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Replace. Replace. And it's going to go through its little process. And once it's done, this will disappear. All right, cool. So we can just go over in here, click on movies. Right here, me, Cinemagraph. I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar. Now, this can be a little bit pixelated because we only saved it a thousand pixels. But you can see, woohoo, it's moving and it's looping just like we asked it to do. Now, obviously, you could speed this up by speeding up or shooting different video, whatever you want. The idea is the same no matter what you do. This is basically the process. And if you wanted this green everywhere, remember, you just wouldn't mask it out. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.